Hello, good morning everybody. Thank you guys for joining us on today's webinar. My name is Ken Miguel. Here with me today is Mike Lugo. Mike, how are you? I'm doing great. Happy about this uh, webinar. It's a sunny day today in San Dimas, California, about 69 degrees, although we are expecting some rain tonight. Right? Yeah, we'll see how that goes, eh? <laughs> <laughs> but still, it's a great day for a webinar and a great topic here. I'm very excited about this. So let's um, let's recap our, our last uh, webinar. Um, we did a webinar on our DVR graphic user interface or GUI. Okay, how to use the interface. Um, how to add uh, uh, cameras, how to change the resolution, all that. Um, you know where do where do you find that uh, webinar? If you guys missed it? Yeah, so we can you can all of our web this one that last one and all of our webinars are on our YouTube page. Our YouTube page um, under Bolide Technology Group North America. And let's go there now so we can show you guys a little more what it uh, actually looks like and entails. Okay, so you go to uh, YouTube, you type in Bolide Tech USA on the search box, and it will take you to this page. And you can see all of our webinars on here, as well as a short video clips, you know, tips and tricks, uh, how to use our app, um, very useful information on regarding any Bolide product. Uh, so you can hear, this is the uh, last month's webinar on the our uh, Angelo HD 1080p and 720p DVR graphic user interface. So that was last month's webinar. Now let's move on to this month's webinar. Okay, just a brief intro. This webinar is brought to you by Bolide Technology Group with over 25 years experience in the security and surveillance industry. We offer only the latest uh, in IP, uh, easy over coax, recorders, pretty much everything CCTV. So we are going over our surveillance client software. What is surveillance client? Where to find the software? When do you need a surveil uh, the, the surveillance client software? How to add devices to them? Um, pretty much I'm going to get to know the software inside and out. We're going to go through every menu on every setting that you can change on a computer. Okay. So you guys, if you guys are a Bolide dealer, uh, as you know, you buy a Bolide DVR, you get a box that has uh, a, a small package with a disc and some accessories, right? So uh, the disc that comes with the DVR has this um, software, right? Yep. And the disc, it's, it's a little, it's a small disc, so we have um, had issues where some computers don't take the little small disc. So you can always go to our website and download Surveillance Client from our website, or if you lose the CD, um, you can also find it there. Surveillance Client is the name of the software, but the best bet is always the CD because that's no errors, nothing like that. When would you need the surveillance client? So the surveillance client has a lot, a lot of, of useful tools, um, not only for one DVR but multiple DVRs, cameras, our NVRs, um, and it's a view on the computer. Um, you can also use the web browser, but the computer is a little more uh, efficient in in the way you can see things, um, and it's always on. You don't have to log into it. Yeah, so, remote viewing is huge in today's uh, market. Brand users, so you got to be able to have them view their DVRs on their PCs and their Macs. Yeah, okay. that's another thing. Macs, it's available for Mac as well. Great, great. So aside from the disk, where else can uh, our dealers find the surveillance client software? Yeah, so on, on our website, bolideco.com, under the um, support tab and software, you will find about three quarters of the page down. You will find surveillance client, and there's two separate ones for the Mac. One for the PC, and they are the newest versions, um, and you can install that straight from the the internet. Okay. 
Okay, the software is as far as compatibility. Uh, of course, uh, it works with our current uh, DVRs, our, our uh, 1080p uh, collapse control models. Uh, the last gen without collapse control work with our 720p DVRs, as well as our legacy analog DVRs, the SBR 9000 HDP with the P2P, and even the even older non-P2P P2P model. In addition to DVRs. This is also the same software that we use for our IPAC NX NVR. This is our newest H.265 4 meg 4K compatible NVR line. And I'd say this compute this tool, this, this software is really, really important for installers because after an install, job's done, you get a call from the customer, something's going on, you're able to log in, you know, to your any you just go to the customer that you have, select that particular DVR and then you can see the settings, see what's going on and maybe save you a trip out back to the customer's location. So it's a pretty important tool. And the beauty of this is you only have to learn one software. Yeah. You know, if you use uh, our NVR or DVR, you don't have to really learn other software. Yeah, very important. Okay, and uh, as far as the software, once it's installed in the computer, and this is the icon. That's what it looks like. You see a little, um, little webcam type, webcam type yeah. icon there. Okay, so what do we need to uh, get set up? So I'm pretty sure you guys are familiar with the phone app by now, um, and you've seen the DVRs. There's a QR code located on the top, or depending on how you're looking at it, bottom left corner. Um, looks very similar to the one that's on there. This is actually our demo, so if you guys want, you can take that number down or scan it with your phone or, or whatever you choose. But uh, the highlighted number at the bottom is what we're going to focus on today because we're using the software. We're going to need to memorize that number, write it down, take note of it. We're going to need it a little later on and need it to load this, the DVRs to the software. This is the software itself. There's another place you can actually find the code. Um, let's say you happen to take the sticker off for security reasons. You need to know how to get that code back. Under the information tab in system, it's always there as well. So if you lose it, you just have to take it off, have a problem with it, you know that it's always hard coded into the DVR and you can find it. It's very, that's important to know. And the reason why we're showing you where to find the device ID is this is the beauty of using these DVRs. Well, we, uh, they have a feature called Quick Connect, which means you don't have to use an, uh, an IP address to access the DVR. In the past, you would have to have either a static IP address, right? Yeah. Or if uh, the customer has a dynamic IP address, you have to set up a DDNS account. Yep. Okay, and which is, you know, I mean, you can go through the process, but you might get stuck somewhere, you know, and spend more time at the installation. So what this does is you only use this device ID and it will connect via device to, to device, right? Correct. Point to P. Correct. Point to point. Or peer to peer, device to device. How would you kind of explain that technology? Is there any security? Um, it's that's actually pretty safe because since it is a direct connection between two devices, you're not having to go through um, a lot of hoops. Once you can get through your firewall, if you have one, your router, um, that's it. Out of port forwarding, it does all that for you. You don't have to worry about port forwarding anymore. Um, and it, like I said, it's pretty secure because it's peer to peer device, um, and there's no outside logins to get in through like a um, uh, cloud-based version and stuff like that. So okay. it's pretty secure. Okay, all right. Guys, yeah, so we'll be asking questions throughout the webinar. So there's a questions box on your screen. Just type in any question that you have and we'll answer them as we go through this webinar. So let's get into the software. Let me pull up the software. Once you pull up the software, you're going to see this icon. Okay, so surveillance client. Oh, crashed. Okay. So when you load the software upon loading it, you're going to open up 
to a wizard. It's going to take you step by step on how to load the actual software. You guys can see. There we go. There we go. So here's our our wizard, DVR wizard, um, and it makes it as easy as can be. Of course, there's an intro. You click next. I don't know why it's crashing. Okay. There we go. Click next. You're going to get an add device and an add online device. What's the difference? Um, adding an online device is probably the easiest way if you are currently on the network. What does that mean? If you are on the same network as your DVR with one simple click, it finds all the devices that are on your network. Simply just selecting it, add selected device, I can now add a device. That's not always the case though, so there is another way to add a device if you're not at the location. You have a question here, will the client software connect to other brands other than uh, Molite Media? No, it's just, it's proprietary, it's gonna be just Molite, um, pretty much like any other CMS out there. That's what you did, so you're going to have to deal with. Can I use an IP address if I want? Good question. Yes, you can use an IP address if you want. What's going to happen when you use an IP address? There's two ways to do it. You can do it through your local IP, your local IP address or your remote IP address. Uh, so give me one second. So now you're seeing the client software, right? Okay. So let's delete this uh, device. So what's the first thing that you do when, uh, when, you add a, when you add a DVR onto this client software? So we're going to go to Google Device Management. Google Device Management. So this is this is the first thing you see, right? Yeah. Control panel. Yep. And there's a, so you go to Group Device Management. So now we're going to add a device. We did the online device, which is pretty easy. But what if you're not at the location? So you're going to add, de add device. And here you can name this. This is the name of the DVR that you feel fit, whatever you want to remember your DVR. This is how you would do it. Okay, so I'm going to device name. I'm going to name it whatever I want, right? Sure. Uh, I'm going to say uh, December. It's December. So okay. now we see IP ID. Um, earlier I showed you a slide where there was a device ID. I said take note of that ID, that number. Um, and that is how we are going to be able to add that device to our client software. So now we're going to go get that number. So it's C H A A. So make sure it's all caps. Yes, very important. Make sure you're always all caps. Eight nine one nine zero nine 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 four six. Media port is always default nine thousand. Nine thousand. Every time, right? Every time, unless unless you change it. Okay. Username is going to be out of the box. What are the input? Admin, all lowercase. Admin, unless you changed it to yeah. something else. But out of the box is admin. Yep, and no password. And I want to make this point. It's really important that to remember. Upon loading the software, it asks you for a username and password. That is for the software. There's two different. Um, entities that we're talking about. One is the DVR. So now we're adding the DVR for its password, its username. When you load the software, it also has a password and username. So just keep in mind that those are separate. The easiest way to get past that is to keep it the same. Keep it uniform, whatever it is for the DVR, and make it the same for the software, and you don't have to worry about forgetting what's what. So that's what I would, that's my recommendation to get past that. Okay, so we're going to click on Add, right? Yeah. So we see December here. 
Okay, and then we're going to have to click on import. So let's also let's show you how to do the IP address as well, as we talked about. So here's where you would put your IP address. Give me a second. So now we're going to add the same thing. We're just going to add to the IP address instead. And we'll just keep that name there so we don't get confused. Oops, wrong box. Since we're on our local network, we'll have to add it locally. Remote, our outside network will be if we were not on the same network. Of course, all, all the inf other information will be the same, 9,000 admin. So now you can see that we have all of our cameras there. We have a 16 channel uh, DVR. Now we can import all. Okay. Now I, ex I exit our group device, right? Yeah, we're going to go back to the control panel. And now under our main menu, and here's a here's where a lot of um, customers will be like, where are my cameras? I don't see them. I just added it. You have to go down to the name of the DVR, and you can either drag it in or, in, or open all channels. So now you can see all of our cameras. That easy. That's it. That's how fast so it is to add. Should be close, and you can pick which cameras you want to see. Which cameras you want. Well, let's just stick with all the cameras. So, what do we want to do now? We want to be able to control or edit our DVR settings through the software. How do we do that? So let's look at the icons here in the front. So okay. what are we looking at here? So you have the cameras. Yeah. Uh, right now I'm on a 16 channel view. So the first icon here gives you a full screen. Full screen, so which will make it, yeah. The rest of the, the menus. Gets rid of all the other buttons and side. side uh, there's the this larger black square. Allows you to change your format. You can actually see what, 120 cameras on one screen. Yeah. Which is perfect. If you have a customer that has, for example, five DVRs and they want to see all of them, right? Yeah. And manage them. Um, and anywhere in between. So let's stick with our eight camera view. We can actually move where they're going. Set them in any configuration you'd like. And then let's set them to mainstream. It's another important option. Um, upon loading it, it might load uh, substream. That customer's calling say, why does it look crappy? Why does it look like that? It's not on the mainstream. Remember, all of our DVRs have multiple streams for um, our remote applications. OK, so the next button will be stop. It should stop. It'll stop. Stop, stop viewing of that particular okay. window. We have a. Kind of one step, a step backward button, yeah, and a step forward button, right? So that is for multiple pages. If you have, you know, um, nine, 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 and nine on different pages, that button will allow you to switch between the screens. And what is this button? So, so that's that's gonna recycle your your view, get you back to the top. Now, when you put your mouse over the cameras themselves. Let's go back to substreaming on channel one. Got to add this to. So this is cool. Um, upon mousing over the the picture itself, you get a set of icons at the bottom left. Um, okay, so let's go to this one. You see the small icon bar jump up there. Let's put this on full screen. You guys can see better. Okay, so what are we looking at here? Okay, so we see the first icon is a camera. Um, that's pretty self-explanatory. It is a take a snapshot of whatever is going on live in that view. Uh, next. So next we see uh, a reel. That is to record 
live to your PC what is going on that you're currently seeing. Yeah. If you guys are not clear, you see where my, my mouse is right now. It's on it's little icons on the individual camera channels. Uh, the third button you see it looks like uh, what that is actually is a joystick. Uh, that'll bring up your PTZ control menu. Uh, if you're using a PTZ and you're familiar with it, you can do your call um, presets from there. Zoom left, right, up, down. It'll bring up that menu. Um, and then the next button is a stop button. Is a stop button. Of course, for self-explanatory, they'll stop the video. Uh, and then we have a magnifying glass. This allows for digital zoom of whatever picture we're looking at. Um, what's a digital zoom? If you're familiar, there you have an optical zoom and a digital zoom. Optical zoom would be the actual camera zooming in its lens itself. Um, and digital zoom is an enhanced picture of what you're already seeing. So you do lose some some um, picture quality when doing digital zoom. So let's go on to the and then. So that, those are the icons that you see on the main view. Yeah. Okay. So again, multiple formats. You can record into your computer. Um, that's also backing up. Yeah. Right? That's pretty important uh, because it gives you a, a security, somewhat of a security backup. Someone steals the DVR, you know that all that video has also been recorded to your computer. So that can come in handy. Okay, also, when you select so that, here. So we want to do settings now. We want, now we want to go into our, our DVR. Since we're streaming, it's taking a little bit of time. We're streaming over our internet, so bear with us. So going back to okay. So you right-click on the device, and you'll see a couple things here. Open all channels, opens all the channels, close all channels, closes all the channels. Set mainstream to all means you're setting up stream uh, to HD for all the channels. Yes. And I did that, that's why you saw the lag um, because we're streaming right now. So if you guys uh, want to set it up this way, just make sure that your customer is um, upload speed is up to par. What's kind of your suggested upload speed here? Yeah, so you want to do at least. Two megs per camera. Um, a lot of people say, "Oh, I got 50 meg download, but the upload's only, you know, two, three megs." That's where you're going to have um, issues, and that's why we have a substream for that reason. A lot of a lot of internet connections don't have that fast of an upload speed. So keep that in mind when you're asking customers what their speed is. Okay. So, and then there is one important button called Remote Configuration. So you click this. So remote configuration. This is what it's all about. This is what we want to do. Besides viewing remotely, we want to be able to get in there and, and make changes. Customer calls or, or customers want to do things remotely. They don't want to have to go to the DVR every time. This is where you're going to do any uh, configuration changes. You can do, I'd say, 90, 95% of any configurations that you can do or make changes in the DVR, you can do from the software. The only ones you can't do are like, um, uh, local display, things like that, or other reboot. security things. Reboot. Yeah. You know, you don't want to have someone get into your DVR and reboot it or turn it off when so, when you're not there. So for the for those reasons, those options are not available. But everything else is. Okay. So let's go through the display settings. So um, here it says channel. So you can name your camera here. Yeah. Uh, so this is a PTC Mini. So it's called PTC Mini. Positioning. Position. And so this this menu that we're in, the name that you're changing is the actual name that's going to display on the camera's um, the camera's view. So you see the white letters, the white letters blocked off, that's what you're changing. You're not changing the name to the left of the of the um, CMS. This is the display of the camera. Notice we're in live, so we're changing that. Um, yeah. 
So covert, you can actually hide certain cameras. So yes. if, um, if a business owner has employees, and then there's one to show certain cameras to, then you can disable up. certain channels. Yep. Um, show live time is so timestamp. Timestamp. Yep. And then show record time. Uh, also on the display, it's called privacy zone. So let's go to different channels. Go to channel four, which is our. So yeah, privacy zone. I don't want no one to see what I'm writing on my um, board there. You know, I, maybe I've got important information. Um, I don't want it to be seen. I am able to block that out. So this is privacy masking, right? Yep, yeah, private privacy mask. That there. So on live on the display from the DVR that will no longer be seen. Okay. And then you click on save. Save and it'll become a blacked out area. So those are live settings. Here is record settings. So under record. You have record parameter. So record parameter. Pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory. Do you want to enable recording? Yes. Uh, the channel number and pre-record. What's pre-record? Pre-record is recording that happens before uh, a motion or an alarm is detected. And you say you're only recording on, on that or with those options. You want to be able to record prior to that alarm or motion going off. So you do want to keep that enabled. Um, record schedule. So this is where you set your DVR to 24/7 or motion detection, right? Yep. Right now, right now it's it's on motion detection, so it's very easy. Let's say I want to switch this to 24/7 recording. I go to normal record, and I take my mouse and highlight the squares, and you see that green bar. Now, uh, green stands for 24/7 recording. Yellow stands for motion detection. If yeah. I want to disable motion, I click on the motion record. A button and then again drag my mouse and it will take away the yellow square. So now it's on 24-7 recording and I just click on copy tap this channel to all if I want to and I save it. Okay. So for now let's say we're going to set this DVR to motion recording only. So I'm going to go to normal record just take these squares out and then go to motion record and then fill up the squares again. So go ahead and fix it out there. Then copy to all channels. Click it's, OK. Then save all. It's pretty much going to get no easier than that in regards to loading. Oh, loading. Uh, and just take note if you see the picture in the back, you see that we enabled the privacy zone um, earlier. You can see the picture, little picture in the back right that actually took that part off, you can no longer see because we enabled that. So okay, so mainstream is what resolution? Resolution. You always wanna your mainstream is always the best resolution because that's what you're gonna record at. Your recording's done on the mainstream. So, so make sure this is, is is all set to the highest options. So you can drop it to up to ten eighty P the lowest is gonna be uh, set resolution. Yeah. Um, our DVRs max out are fifteen frames per second. At 1080p resolution, right? Yep. Okay. And you can also change the bitrate as well. Um, that's you know a little advanced users would be changing playing with bitrate if you have problems with um, with your network speed and stuff like that. Then you would you would uh, change that there. But for the most part, you want to leave that. Okay, so those are record parameters. Let's so go to network settings. So network, what do we have to know here? So network, you have. So network settings, um, uh, we recommend that you do not play with the network settings unless you're familiar with uh, network, network options, and how things work. We ship every DVR already enabled the way it needs to be enabled. Um, so it's plug and play. If you do play with these options here, um, things might go wrong. The P2P will no longer work the way it should. So we do recommend that you leave these settings alone. Okay. Substream. So substream, we talked about. Mainstream, substream, um, this is where you would enable that. Also, very important, if you are using microphones, um, you see that substream also has a audio enable disable option. You want to enable it there as well as mainstream. Um, a lot of times you're using your mobile device to hear that audio, which is on the substream. You want to make sure that's enabled. Very important. Um, frames per second, bit rates, just like mainstream. Okay, so you, also, you can also set up somebody to receive emails when there is motion or activity 
uh, or alarm, right? Yep. It's pretty simple to, to um, set up. You do have to have your uh, email provider have their information, their SMT, SM, SMTP port, uh, their server, email address, and then you have to have a receiver address as well. So that, keep in mind, those are two separate emails. One's a sender, one's a receiver. They cannot be the same. Um, that's pretty important, another important thing to mention. And then, DNS, so, do we still use DDNS? DDNS? So even though we no longer need DDNS, we still have the option there. Some people like to use it. So it's there. It's there if, if need be. Um, you don't want to use the P2P option. You still have the option of using the DDNS. And that, once again, we do recommend you use P2P. It's easier. It's faster. It's, yeah. Bolide also has a, a DDNS server. It's, a free, it's yes. free. It's called. Uh, you go to Bolide DDNS.com and you can register. Correct. Yep. Okay, so let's go to alarm. Let's go back to the configuration. Alarm. Under alarm, you have motion area. Yeah. So this is important. Uh, how do I set? I set up the motion in my schedule. Now, how do I? set the options up for my alarm, uh, for my motion. It's under the alarm tab. So don't get it confused with alarm as well, because there is an alarm trigger as well as motion trigger. So for right now, we're talking about motion. This is where you set up the area you want the motion to be detected. A question that we get a lot is, what is getting detected? You can see there, there's a red box. The red is where the motion is getting detected. So if you highlight red, that's where it's going to get detected. Not if it's not highlighted, then that area will not be detected. Very similar to um, privacy zone, the way it works. Um, also, channels from here, sensitivity. Uh, the higher the number, the higher the sensitivity. Um, you can also have it record to multiple channels, a motion detection. Um, go to full screen, have it trigger an alarm. If you have an alarm system, have it trigger that alarm. Um, what is latch time? Latch time is the time if you have the buzzer enabled, that, that buzzer is going to buzz for um, default 10 seconds. A lot of times, customers will turn that off because that buzzer does get annoying. But there are instances where you do need to hear the buzzer go off if it detects motion. So that's where you'll find it. So. Now we have an alarm tab. We went through motion. Alarm is a alarm that's hooked up to your your um, your DVR. It has alarm in and alarm out. You can have it. Alarm gets triggered. That can trigger a recording, or vice versa. If a motion happens on the DVR, you can trigger your alarm to go off. Um, and it's the same concept as the motion detection. You can have it record on multiple channels, full screen, email, things of that nature. Okay, so that's alarm settings. Yeah. Um, let's go to device. What's under device? You have HDD. So this tells you how much hard drive you have left, right? Yeah. Um, at the DVR, this option allows you to format the hard drive. As you can see, you cannot do that remotely. That's a security reason. Uh, you don't want anybody getting a hold of your DVR and formatting your, your hard drive because you have information on there. So for security reasons, it's just a view. Okay. So PTZ? PTZ, another very helpful, useful option that you can get remotely. Um, protocols, our newer DVRs use control over coax, so you no longer have to set um, Talco D, Talco P set up. You don't have to no longer worry about that, the, bid, the baud rate and any of those other options. But for older PTZs, this is where you set those, those uh, settings up. Uh, if, you, if you have a, a bolide motorized lens, a uh, camera or any motorized uh, TVI motorized uh, lens camera, can you control it on your software? Yes, this, and this is where you would enable that um, option. If you go to protocol, you'll see that there's a coax option. That's for control over coax. Once you set that control over coax option, you no longer have to set any other settings. No baud rate, no data bit, no stop bit. That's it. Once that's enabled, you're ready to go. Cloud storage is that it's it's not particularly cloud for video. It's it's Dropbox, right? For yes. Screenshots. Yes, it is screenshots, and it's basically a failsafe. 
And if it happens to the DVR, you know, you have screenshot images of, of what's going on. So that's the device. Let's go to system. You have general settings where you uh, set your time, right? Yeah, so this is, this is, I can't stress how important it is to know where this is because of that. Numerous, numerous times we get calls um, from customers saying it's not recording, it's not, I don't know what's going on. The date wasn't set. Because we don't, the one thing we do not do when we set out, send out DVRs is set the date because it goes all around the country, time zones, um, things like that. So because of that, you please get familiar with this tab and this option. You can set 24 hour or 12 hour um, time and settings. Really all you have to do is click on use PC time, right? Yes, and that makes it adjust. so easy. So easy. click PC time, it's going to link it to whatever time you have on your PC, and that's it. One button. Very cool. All right. Lastly is advanced. Do we need to worry about firmware updates or? So in, in the case of there is a firmware update, this is where it would be loaded. 99.9% um, .9 of the time, you will not have to worry about that. Um, but if it ever happened, this is where you can load it from. Uh, next is default, load defaults. Do you ever have to load factory settings to the DVR? This is where you can do it. And it gives you, the cool thing is, um, different categories. You don't have to do the whole thing. You can just do certain categories. So that's, that's just pretty uh, cool about that. Events. Events, another big, big one. Um, the buzzer goes off on, on the DVR a lot just to indicate that there's something wrong or something's going on. Sometimes um, network issues, maybe there's a bad cable, it will continue to go off. We we'll get a lot of calls of how do I turn that off? This is where you would do it. And then last is maintain. Do we need to really auto reboot this every week or every night? What's, what's, what's the purpose of doing that? So what's the benefits of doing that? So just to refresh your DVR, get rid of all its cash, um, you know, let it, let it recycle everything. Channel. It's not necessary, um, but, you know, if you feel comfortable having it done, then go ahead and do it. Just keep in mind that when it restarts, of course, no video will be recorded at that time, so that's gonna, you're going to have some downtime, maybe a minute or so while that happens. Okay, so those are remote settings. Again, I mean, pretty much most... I mean, aside from physically rebooting it, you can do remotely. Yeah. So if you guys are installing these, you can actually troubleshoot before you head out to a job site. Um, you just needed the credentials to the DVR, um, ask your customer for the password, and you'll be able to troubleshoot remotely. Yeah, and um, it'll save a lot of time, a lot of, of driving, if it can, something that can be done like that. Okay, so remote playback. Let's go over this real quick. So, again, going back to that uh, DVR, how do, we, how do you play back, right? So, very simple. Very simple. Again, so you go to the device, you go to the channel, for example, yeah, you can go to channel four, and you see a calendar here. Uh, the dates with a red arrow or triangle, whatever you want to call it, has recordings. So I go on, I want to click on the 14th, click on search. Oops. Actually, you go to file type and make sure that you. Yeah. Uh, choose the correct file type. I was on on 20% recording and this DVR is on motion, so it won't pull up. So I advise you guys to click on all. So it's yeah. all recordings. All the easiest way to do it. And you click on search. And now you see the activity. You click play and you're playing back. Now, in my opinion, this is a hundred times easier than getting the video from the DVR. This is really, really simple. It's click, search, bam. You know. Yeah, we got a question. How many channel? How many cameras can you do playback at once? So you can see here that there's a, a an icon on the bottom that has the screens that lets you that lets you select different views um, configuration on how you wanna how you wanna see them. So you can do four, four or one. Um, a lot of times, if you're looking at you know what it is, you know what camera it is, you just go to one. If not, then you want to see what's going on in multiple cameras, you're able to do that. Yeah, you can do simultaneous. Yeah. Uh, playback. playback, right? So yeah. let's try. And with a simultaneous playback, that means that they'll all play in sync, basically. They'll sync with each other and all be playing the same time at the, at the same time. Okay, so that's very cool. And it's just point and click. Very simple.
Okay, so let's uh, get out of uh, playback. We've already seen group device management. Uh, let's go to system configuration. Um, very important, very important. So you have general? Yeah, general is that's pretty self-explanatory. Language. But then there's files. So this is a, a, an important piece of the software. This is where you set your full, your, your path of where the video files and, and snapshots are going, right? Yeah. Um, a lot of times, customers call, I back this up, I can't find it. You know, they're looking, pulling their hair out, trying to find where they, where their videos got saved. Um, there's a, there is a default location. We recommend that you set your own location so you know exactly where it's at. Uh, so before you even start playing with anything, you want to go here, set your, your paths. You also set the size that you want each file to be as well. Okay. Uh, account management. This is where you'll set users um, and what they can do. Now, keep in mind, like I said earlier, this is separate from the users on the DVR. You may have set users to the DVR as well. This is the software. So you can yeah. add another, it's basically another layer of, um, of users and security. Okay, local playback is playing back any video clips that I've saved into my computer. Uh, for example, I'm using this to back up my video files. I can pull them up here. Yeah, so that's pretty important. Remember that local storage and, I'm mean, sorry, local playback and remote playback are completely different. Remote is from the DVR, local is from your computer. And then there's Emacs. Emacs is very, very, very cool. Very, uh, it can be very helpful. Um, if you have a customer that has a large perimeter, you know, or they have someone viewing their video, a lot of cameras, motion, something goes off, how are you going to know where that happens? Uh, Emaps allows you to import a map or plans, a layout of the location, and drag and drop the cameras where they are physically, and you'll get an alarm signal and actually a pop-up indicating, hey, there's an alarm here, and I, you'll see directly where it's going on. So that's pretty helpful. So that's the client software. Uh, again, you can do plenty of features. You have your, your pretty much total control of your DVR, right? Yeah, like I said, about 95% of what you can do at the DVR, you can do with the client software. So, yeah. Okay, any uh, questions? So we, got a, we have a question here. Do I do the same? steps in adding an NVR or an IP camera to the software? Good question. Very good question. That's the beauty of our devices and our software. Everything is universal. You're going to add an IP camera, you're going to add an NVR, you're going to add a DVR all the same way. Um, and that's very, very helpful when it comes to, you know, you as an installer having to do yeah, 10 of these a day, it's all the same process. Once you're in one, you're good. And you can view them all on the same screen. That's another advantage. Okay. So, any other questions regarding software, um, individual cameras adding, DVRs, NVRs, um, anything like that? Oh, so, here's another question. How many users can log in at one time? So just like the DVR, three users at one time. And you can have more than three users, but at one time, only three users can view the device at once. Keep that in mind. OK, so that's pretty much it for the client software. Uh, again, um, full featured, I mean, total control of your, your DVR or multiple DVRs. Uh, you can have multiple devices here. You can pick and choose how many channels from every DVR, NVR you want to put on. Um, for example, here I have an IP camera. Just add to the same software, and it's right there. So it's a great tool. It's a great um a selling feature for your customers. I'm sure they want to see their systems wherever they're at, and surveillance client is your answer. Okay, so that's the end of the webinar, guys. Uh, thanks for joining us. Hopefully, you guys 
uh, got a good idea of what this software can do. Um, it's already included with our DVRs, so you're not paying any uh, more money for them. So util utilize it. It's good. Uh, it's very useful. It's a great sales tool, like I mentioned. Um, we'll keep answering questions uh, if you guys got some more. And then um, see you guys on the next webinar. Okay, we, got, we have a question here. Can we find the Mac software in the same disk? Yes, you can. Um, the only problem with that is, is that um, with the Mac software, the CD, a lot of Mac laptops don't take that little CD. So then you would have to go get it from our website. Um, yeah. If you can throw it on the thumb drive or something like that, then you'd be, you'd be good. But yeah. Another question. Oh, thank you. Steve, for joining us. We appreciate your time. Can I do a, a, a data dump from my hard, DVR hard drive into an external PC? If you mean all the videos, for example, you have one terabyte of videos. What do you, can you? So you can, but it will take a long time. But you can. So you can also just do, have your computer recording the same thing that your DVR is. At the same time, so there's a couple ways you can do that. I would probably recommend doing. I mean, if you do do that, you're going to. Would, would you recommend dumping a whole hard drive's worth of data? That's a lot. That's a lot. It's a lot to do. I mean, if it's something that you need no, to right? do, yeah, I would say no. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's why we have motion detection. Yeah, I would say motion detection is the best way to go. You can just grab the clips and. Yeah. Well, you you can uh, back up uh, multiple clips. Yeah. 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 And you can set the size to them as well. So. You know, if you want just to get bigger chunks or smaller chunks, easier to deal with those files. And we'll be able to uh, send you guys a recording of, of this webinar after uh, this session, and you'll find it also on our YouTube channel. Yeah. But again, thank you guys for uh, joining us and supporting our monthly webinars. Thank you, guys.